In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to calculate the covariance between two variables. So we have the values of x and the corresponding values of y. The equation that you need in order to calculate the covariance is this equation. The covariance between the variables x and y is the sum of the products of the differences in the x values with the mean of x or the average x value times the differences of all the y values with the average y value. And this is going to be divided by. Now, when calculating the sample covariance, it's n minus 1. When calculating the population variance, it's simply n. But for this video, we're going to calculate the sample covariance. So that's the formula that you need in, in order to calculate the covariance between x and y. Now, let's talk about how to use this formula with the use of a table. So in the first column, I'm going to put all of the x values. In the second column, I'm going to place the y values. And then the difference between the x values and the mean. Here I'm going to have the difference between the y values and the mean. And then in the last column, I'm going to put the products of the difference between the x values and the mean and the y values and the corresponding mean. So first, let's write out the x values. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. Now for the y values, it's 3, 7, 10, 14, and 17. Now, before we can move on to the next column, we need to calculate x bar and y bar. So let's sum up the x values. 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10. So the sum of all the x values is 30. Now, let's do the same thing for the next column. The sum of all the y values is 51. Now, to calculate x bar, it's going to be the sum of all of the x values divided by n. So here's the sum of the x values. And we can see that n is 5 because we have 5 x values and 5 y values. So x bar, the average of all the x values is 6. Now, let's calculate y bar. So let's take the sum of all the y values and divide it by n. So the sum of the y values is 51. n is equal to 5. 51 divided by 5 is 10.2. So let's save these values. Now, for the next column, we're going to subtract every x value by x bar. So this is going to be 2 minus 6, which is negative 4, and then 4 minus 6, which is negative 2, and 6 minus 6, that's 0, and then 8 minus 6 is 2, and then finally 10 minus 6 is 4. Now, there's no need for us to take the sum of this column, because if we add it, we're just going to get 0. And that value, we're not going to use, so we don't need to worry about that. Now, let's do the same thing for y. So let's take y and subtract it by y bar. So 3 minus 10.2 is negative 7.2. And then 7 minus 10.2, that's 
that's going to be negative 3.2. 10 minus 10.2 is negative 0.2. Now, 14 minus 10.2, that's going to be 3.8, but it's going to be a positive number. And 17 minus 10.2 is 6.8. If you were to take the sum of this column, you're going to get 0. Just like if you take the sum of these numbers, you'll get 0 as well. Now for the next part, we need to take the product of these two columns. So negative 4 times negative 7.2, that's going to give us a positive number. So positive 28.8. .8. And then negative 2 times negative 3.2. That's going to be positive 6.4. 0 times negative 0.2 is 0. And then 2 times 3.8 is 7.6. And 4 times 6.8 is 27.2. Next, we need to take the sum of that column. So 28.8 plus 6.4 plus 7.6 plus 27.2, we get a total value of 70. All right, so at this point, I'm going to get rid of this part of the table just to make some space. So the covariance is going to be the sum of x minus x bar times y minus y bar over n minus 1. This part here, the sum of the products of the differences of x and x bar times y and y bar, that's this number here. That's 70 because we summed each individual iteration of this product. So we already have the numerator for that equation. n is 5, so this becomes 70 divided by 4. 70 divided by 4 is 17.5. So this is the covariance between x and y for this problem. It's positive 17.5. So make a note of that, and we're going to talk about what that number represents later in this video. Now let's work on another example problem. Feel free to pause the video if you want to try it yourself. So our x values is going to be 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. And for y, let's say it's 20, 17, 13, 9, and 4. So go ahead and take a minute to work on this example problem. So let's begin with a table. So first we have x, and then y, and then x minus x bar, and then y minus y bar. And then the product of x minus x bar times y minus y bar. So the x values that we have are 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. For y, it's 20, 17, and then 13, 9, and 4. So let's take the sum of the first column. 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15 is 45. And then let's do the same for the y values. 20 plus 17 plus 13 plus 9 plus 4 
is 63. Now let's calculate x bar. So x bar is going to be the sum of all the x values divided by n. So the sum of the x values is 45 and we have five data points. So we're going to get 9 for the value of x bar. Now let's calculate y bar. It's going to be the sum of all of the y values divided by n. So that's 63 divided by 5. Sixty-three divided by five is twelve point six. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and calculate x minus x bar. So three minus nine is negative six, and then six minus nine is negative three. Nine minus nine is 0, 12 minus 9 is 3, and then 15 minus 9 is 6. If we take the sum of this column, we're going to get 0. Now, moving on to the next column, we have y minus y bar. So 20 minus 12.6, that's going to be 7.4, and then 17 minus 12.6, is 4.4. 13 minus 12.6 is positive 0.4. 9 minus 12.6 is negative 3.6. And 4 minus 12.6 is negative 8.6. If you add up this column, you're going to get 0 as well. Now, for the next one, we need to take the product of the third and the fourth column to get the values for the fifth column. So x minus x bar, that's negative 6, times y minus y bar, that's 7.4. So negative 6 times 7.4 is negative 44.4. Next, we'll multiply negative 3 by 4.4 which is negative 13.2. 0 times 0 0.4 is 0. 3 times negative 3.6 is negative 10.8. And then 6 times negative 8.6 is negative 51.6. Now, the next thing we need to do is take the sum of this column. So if we add those five numbers, we're going to get negative 120. So now we can calculate the covariance between the variables x and y. So it's going to be the sum of the product of x minus x bar and y minus y bar divided by n minus 1. So this part, the sum of the products of those differences, we already have, I'm going to highlight that in red, it's negative 120. n is 5 in this problem, so this becomes negative 120 divided by 4, which is negative 30. So that's the answer for this problem. So notice that the covariance is negative for that situation. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a graph. I'm actually going to create two graphs. We're going to place the x variables on the horizontal axis and the y variables on the vertical axis. Now, for the first problem that we had, I'm going to plot these points. So for the x values, it was 2, 4, 6, 8, 10.
And then for the y values, it was 3, 7, 10, 14, and 17. This is not drawn to scale, but we're going to make the best of this. So when x is 2, y is 3. When x is 4, y is about 7. When x is 6, y is 10. x is 8, y is going to be 14. And when x is 10, y is 17. So it's not a perfectly straight line, but we could clearly see a linear, a linear relationship. Now, I'm going to plot the second data set that we had. So for the x values, it was 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. Now, for the y values, we had 4, 9, 13, 17, and 20. When x is 3, y is 20. When x is 6, it's 17. When x is 9, it's 13. And when x is 12, it's 9. And then we have the point 15, 4. So we could see that for the second data set, there was a negative uh, relationship. So for the first problem, we calculate the covariance between x and y to be positive 17.5. And for the second problem, the covariance between these two variables was calculated to be negative 30. So notice that as x increases, y increases for the first graph, and the covariance is positive. So if you have a linear relationship with a positive slope, the covariance is going to be above zero. It's going to be positive. If the slope is negative, the covariance will be less than zero. So for the second one, as x increases, y decreases. So we can see the negative relationship there. So that's what you can learn from covariance. If the covariance is positive, well, that describes a positive relationship between x and y. As one variable increases, the other increases. If the covariance is negative or less than zero, it shows a negative relationship between the two. When one goes up, the other goes down. If the covariance is equal to zero, then there's no relationship between x and y. 